Well, good morning. It's so good to be in the house of God today. Amen. How many of you have hope today in Christ Jesus? It's good to have hope. Psalm 42, 12 says, Why are you cast down, O my inner self? Sometimes it's just good to talk to your inner self. And why should you moan over me and be disquieted within me? Hope in God and wait expectantly for him, for, for I shall yet praise him who is the help of my countenance and my God. We have hope in God this morning. Amen? Amen. So let's stand and rejoice in that hope. Hallelujah. Not just hope, but we have hope from a God who is alive in our lives. 
and he is here and I know that just talking with several of us already this morning that we need hope in our life there's healings for our bodies situations in our life that need to be transformed and changed and it's not because of just a group of people but it's because of the power of the Almighty God who is with us today that he wants to stir that hope on the inside of us you know those words says that he wants to keep hope alive and to keep anything alive in our life we have to continue to feed it and so uh, today as we come together and in this moment in this time um, it is to stir us up it is to, to feed that fire of hope that is on the inside of us it is to to cause us to be able to grow in our hope and our transformation in our life to be more like Jesus and so father God we just receive your presence in our life Lord every single one of us need a fresh touch of your presence Every single one of us need a, a correction in our life. Every single one of us have answers that need to be uh, given to us, guidance from you. Every one of us, dear God, needs strength for our physical bodies, healings, dear God. Uh, Lord, we've got requests that are beyond even our imagination on how they could even be fixed. But you are God that can do all things in our life. And so we just pause in this moment and we're just thankful for your presence. We're thankful that we don't have to know everything, but we can trust the God who is at work in us, both the will and to do your good pleasure. You have drawn us here, Lord. And so we answer that call and we're here to be uh, changed by you. And that change always starts on the inside of us. So we make room for the word of the Lord to come alive in us. We listen to the voice of a supernatural God who wants to guide us and direct us. And Lord, we open our life up to be used of you to help those that are around us. And so we just thank you for your presence here today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for just a moment. And I, I want to just thank you for being here today. And I know a lot of people that are traveling and different things that are, are going on. But appreciate you being here. This is kind of a holiday week for many people. And so, yeah, around here we've... We've uh, kind of uh, streamlined a few things um, and done a few things a little bit different. Last Sunday, when Pastor, or when uh, we had uh, Reverend George here and, and Joyce and the great job that they did, one of the things that, if you remember, George says that um, God sometimes uh, changes the routine in our life. And so this week, we're changing up the routine a little bit here at Grandview. Um, due to the holidays and different things. No prayer tomorrow here in the sanctuary. So no Monday prayer on Memorial Day. And no service on Wednesday night. No, no regular service here or children's ministry or, or youth ministry on Wednesday night um, as we normally do. But we want to encourage you, since you've got all that extra time on your hands now, is to go ahead, find another person, call them up, invite yourself over to their house, do something, but, but connect with somebody this week. You've got some extra time that's given to you, um, and so I just want to encourage you to take advantage of that opportunity and connect with someone this week with no regular service on Wednesday night. So please take care of that. And then also um, on uh, Thursday, there'll be no men's lunch on Thursday this week. Um, and I just want to pause right here and just say thank you for last Wednesday night. Just your, um, your sensitivity to the, the leading of the Holy Spirit. Um, you're engaging in what God calls us to do in the supernatural realm. Um, that you uh, are, are willing to get involved in what God is calling us to do um, corporately as a church. But more importantly, as we could say, spiritually as a church. As we step out into uh, those, that spiritual realm that we're called to and praying together and seeing things happen. And so I just want to say thank you. And many of you, because of your coming on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. and going through uh, that time in, in, uh, in prayer, and it's becoming a, a discipleship time and a pathways time there to just be connected there. Those on Monday, our prayer time there together. So just want to say thank you as pastor, just the privilege of being a part of last Wednesday night. Um, as a congregation. And um, for some of you that, that aren't able to be here today, but I know that they're watching online, I just appreciate them. You know, in Acts chapter 20, verse 20, it says, and, and how they did not shrink from declaring to you anything that was profitable and teaching you in public and from house to house. You know what? Today, we can do this simultaneously. We can preach and declare the word in the house and in people's house at the same time. And so um, I know that uh, sometimes you can't be here, 
um, and, but it's always good to, to be able to tune in and to watch it. But being here is always the best thing. Amen? Amen? So turn to someone and tell them being here is the best thing for you. It's the best thing for you. All right? And being here also includes um, 55 uh, plus lunch coming up um, next Sunday. And so uh, June 4th. So sign up in the, in the uh, foyer there so they can make sure they've got enough uh, of everything there. Five a dollar chip. Uh, five dollar chip. Five dollar. We're not. <laughs> I'll raise you five. No. Uh, please forgive me. Uh, five dollar meat chip in for that. Um, if you have any questions, uh, you can see. Uh, Nadine, Joyce, or Robin there, and they can answer those for you, but um, that's an, a, just a good time right after service to be together. Sign up in the foyer so they can know uh, what's going on, um, especially because there's no service on Wednesday night. So also a, another ministry opportunity that is available to, um, to, to just about anybody is, um, is we need help. Isn't this an amazing building that God has given us here? Isn't it incredible? Isn't it, isn't it beautiful carpeting that we have in this facility? Isn't it beautiful? Guess what? It needs to get vacuumed on a regular basis. And this is what's incredible. You could come and spend time in the presence of the church and have a ministry opportunity at the same time by helping by vacuuming once in a while around here. We have no paid um, custodian care here at the church. We all do it. Staff kicks in and others that, that help out as far as that goes, but it would help us out um, immensely if either uh, uh, once a week or if you could say, hey, put my name on the list if, um, if you need help, uh, that I would be able to do that. And to be able to come in and we could show you the strategic places to plug your vacuum in. Um, and we will even provide a vacuum of your choice um, to be able to help us out. So it would be great if you could help or would be interested in being a part on that list, um, call the office and talk to Lisa and uh, would, would just be um, a greatly appreciated as far as that goes. So those are some uh, opportunities coming up. This is Pentecost Sunday. This is the, a reminder for us that Jesus uh, gave us the, the privilege of having the presence of the Holy Spirit to come upon the church to be able to do the work that he has called us to do. In John's gospel, Jesus appears to the disciples after his resurrection, and he breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. And they were born again at that particular moment where they breathed in individually the, the presence of God into their life. They seen the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ. But he also said for them to wait and to tarry for the promise that the Father has for you. For you shall receive the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And we see in Acts chapter 2 that the Holy Spirit was poured out upon all flesh at that time and they received the Holy Spirit in a new dimension, in a new way that had never happened before. And I'm just so glad that the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the presence of God in our life is still for us today in our lives. And I'm just so thankful that the Holy Spirit was poured out and wasn't taken back. The Holy Spirit is still available for every single believer to be able to receive in, the, in this dimension the supernatural power. I'm so glad that we have a God that is beyond my comprehension and his supernatural presence still works through us. And so we see on the day of Pentecost, they have the initial evidence there of the power of the Holy Spirit coming upon them where they spoke in that heavenly language. I like the way Miles Monroe says, it's the language of the kingdom of God. And so we have the, the presence of God in our life for the new birth. We have the presence of the Holy Spirit come upon us so that we can be able to serve him in a supernatural way. And we even have the Holy Spirit that comes upon us that reverses the effects, we could even say, of the power of Babel where we come together as the temple of the Holy Spirit, and he has that new language that he flows through us. So why don't we stand today, let's worship the Lord some more, and let's just be thankful for the supernatural presence of God who's going to put hope back into your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Revival embers smoldering, breath of God, 
fan us into flame. We need a fresh wind, the fragrance of heaven. Pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out.
the fragrance of heaven pour your spirit out pour your spirit out a holy anointing the power of your presence pour your spirit out pour your spirit out pour your spirit out Getting everything we want And we are weary of Living this life just for us Oh, forgive us of Seeking your hand and not your face Come and empty us Father, we're desperate in this place We are God Holy Spirit, fill us with your fire, give us your desires, hold us close to you. Holy Spirit, give us a revelation, a holy visitation.
about Jesus in your life it's okay to be able to be vocal it's okay to even get loud and excited about God in our life and who he is God's not given us a spirit of timidity which means that we've got some courage about us amen sometimes we shout because we're excited sometimes we need to shout because we've got a holy anger about us I know no one in this house has ever shouted out of anger before but I mean a holy anger a holy anger we're just fed up with the devil fed up with what he's trying to do fed up with sickness and disease in our life fed up with the way the adversary is attacking our family fed up with the way this world is going and somebody ought to do something about it and we're that somebody amen the Bible tells us the Bible says that God has is not only a supernatural God but he wants his people to do supernatural things in James chapter 5 James chapter 5 it says and the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise them up 
That's good news. If you're sick or if you need saved in some area of your life, not just saved and getting born again in the sense, but saved, maybe there's a, a, a process, a restoration that needs to go on. Maybe there's a healing in the body. Maybe there's a financial need. Maybe there's a mental peace that you need in your life. Maybe the restoration, and I, I don't know what it is, but God's able to save whatever it is. He's able to save. The prayer of faith, the prayer of faith, the prayer of faith, simple faith. It didn't say the prayer of a perfect person. It says the prayer of faith. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if he's committed any sins, they'll be forgiven him. Isn't that wonderful? That, that God in that moment, that, that he's a forgiving God. Therefore, confess your sins one to another. Pray one for another that you may be healed. That there is a, a work of healing. The, the prayer of the righteous person. That one that has been made righteous by God in the blood of the Lord Jesus the prayer of a righteous person has tremendous power at his work. For just a moment here, it doesn't take a long time, but, it, but it, we're, we need to act on the word. If you're here today and you just simply say, Pastor, I need prayer in my life. Maybe it's a sickness in your body. Maybe it's some area of your life. You need the saving grace of God. Maybe, maybe you even say, I just need some forgiveness in my life and I'm just struggling to, to receive and I just need someone just to experience the presence of God. We believers, and you don't have to be perfect, you just need to be righteous. How do I get to be righteous? Well, righteousness is a gift from God that is given to everyone that accepts Jesus as their Savior, that we have been made the righteousness of God in Christ. It's not something we create. It's not something that you've been good enough this week or just because you're in church on Sunday morning. It's because of what Jesus has given you and has given you that gift of righteousness. So the righteous people have the opportunity to pray in faith. Faith is simply trusting in what God can do regardless of what's going on. And so uh, I just want to, if you're here today, it's not going to take a long time, but you just raise up your hand because we want the presence of God to manifest in people's lives. And so just raising your hand, say, I just need prayer. Now quickly look around, those of you, just put your hand up that needs prayer. Someone, uh, make sure that everyone gets a, uh, if you got a hand up, we should have hands on them. If they have hands up, if you're a righteous person, if you're born again, you know Jesus is your Savior, you can pray the prayer of faith. You're not the one that's making them get whatever in their life. You're just the conduit that the Holy Spirit is using at this minute. And so right now, we release the presence of God to flow through us. In accordance to your word, Lord, we simply act in faith in your word we thank you that you gave us permission and also the mandate to pray one for another and so father we just come into your presence and we thank you that you are a god that invades our presence whatever these people need whatever their need is they're crying out to the god who's able to meet their need above and beyond what they can ever ask or imagine you're able to meet their needs immediately quickly Lord, you are at work to bring them to pass in some situations. But Lord, we're just praying right now, healing in bodies and salvation, deliverance, provision, protection over their lives. We thank you that you are the saving God. So whatever needs to be restored, refilled, or refreshed in their life right now, we are praying one for another according to your word. And we thank you, Lord. Even the effects of sin are being released. Even those that struggle with unforgiveness in this moment are sensing the love of God so consuming them that they are releasing that unforgiveness. Anyone that has sin in their life, Lord, they are being forgiven. So we receive forgiveness and we, dear God, we release forgiveness in our life. And we just thank you, Lord, as we obey your word in your presence as your church we will see manifestations of your amazing grace and lives will be changed and they will be a testimony and a living word of what God is doing in this day. In Jesus' name, amen. And what do we do? Pause just for a minute. We look, we look around. Does anybody need prayer? We listen. Did the Holy Spirit say to you to give them either a short word or a scripture? And then we, we just thank God that we go and we do what God's called us to do. Now, if you're here to say, you can be seated. You say, well, Pastor, I don't know if I got anything or not. Well, the Bible says, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Can I get a better amen out of you? 
The Bible says if we pray the prayer of faith, and if you had more than one person around you, odds are pretty good that you got the prayer of faith prayed over you, that the Lord shall raise them up. The Lord shall do a work in their life. So we're not questioning necessarily, did something happen? Did I feel something? First of all, we're declaring, according to the word of God, I believe that the word is true in my life. I believe that I can receive whatever that I had the need of, and I'm going to receive it in my life. But if we believe it and the word state it, then we'd all, it's good for us to go ahead and say, I, I expect to see a difference. I expect to feel a difference. I expect to, to, to have that manifestation happening in my life. And it's one, one thing to say, I believe I'm going to, you know, it's going to come to pass, but bless God, we need to be some, see some nows happening in our life. Amen. And so I encourage you uh, 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 as the presence of God is moving in your life and as you're uh, experiencing that, be telling somebody else. Well, I tell you what, I was in church yesterday and the power of God was there. Preacher was on fire. He was good. You need to come back and hear him. But I tell you what, the spirit of God was moving and, and people prayed for me. And it was, the, it was the wildest thing I'd experienced in a long time. Felt like electricity was going through my body. It was amazing. Go ahead and tell somebody. If you bump... If you wrecked your car today, you'd be telling everybody all week long. Well, God wants to fix your wreck called your life. And we need to be telling other people about his saving grace in us. Amen. I dare you to tell somebody about what goes on in church this week and see the presence of God work in their lives. And, uh, and to be a, can, one that is going to continue to share that word. Uh, I'm going to start a series today that's probably going to go for a couple of weeks to really... I, we've, we've touched on this here and there, but I want to on purpose really secure this in our life. It is so essential. I want to talk over the next couple of weeks about uh, God's word in our lives. God's word in our life. Uh, I know the Holy Spirit wants to lead and guide us and that he has been given to us. As many as are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. And, and we know that, that the Holy Spirit has been given to us to lead us and to guide us in many supernatural ways. And so often we have even people say, well, how do you know whether it's God or not? And, and this and that. And how do you hear from God? I want you to know that we've got to hear the word of the Lord in the written form and believe it before we're probably going to have any trust in the Holy Spirit's supernatural leading in our life. And when we get the word in us, it gives us a, a, a foundation because any thought or leading or even supernatural experience that happens will never contradict the word if it is from God in your life. And so in our day, I think it's so important for us to, to get to the point that we believe the word of God unconditionally and without reservation so that we are going to be ready to be able to be led more efficiently in trusting the voice of the Holy Spirit when he speaks to us in our day and to be able to lead us and to guide us. And so the verse that I uh, felt impressed to, to really get you to, to uh, meditate on and to have kind of as a cornerstone is 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. And I want to encourage you to get your Bible out, look that up, and write that scripture down. I would encourage you to meditate just on this verse, if nothing else, uh, for a while, to write it down. Lots of times I, I go and I write scripture down and I have my verse of the day and just uh, write it down on a piece of paper and kind of have it in my pocket so that I'm meditating over it and thinking on it. Even when I stick my hand in my pocket, I, oh, that's, the, that's, the, that's my verse for the day. And I, I pause and think for a while on it. We need to spend more time meditating the word in our life. Does anybody here have extra stress in your life? Extra stress. Isn't that amazing? We never give away extra stress. We always keep it like it's going to be something we run out of. But we, we, can, we need to have more of the word in our life. More of what the truth of the Bible has to say to help us to be able to live the life he has called us to live. Now, I want to read this, uh, this scripture in just a moment out of the, um, the Amplified Translation here. One of the Amplified Translations in 1 Thessalonians 2.13. But I want to capitalize it for just a moment. Paul is writing to the believers, a, a young church in Thessalonica. He's writing to believers here because he knows that after he's gone, that there is going to be those that are going to try to uh, get them to believe a half-truth. He, he knows that there's going to be those that are going to come because of the culture 
to try to draw them back and to make it more um, uh, palatable, more convenient for the culture, for the, for the church to be there and not to be so different. He, he knows that there are going to be just struggles that are going to go on in life. Does anybody go through struggles in your life and, and hardships? And, and, and there's going to be times that it's going to be difficult just to be a believer. And Paul is writing to them because he knows that if the church doesn't mature, if the believer doesn't grow spiritually and mature, that it probably won't last long. Or if it does last, it will, it will lose its effectiveness in the community. And so he's writing to the believers here and stirring them up. And so I want to look at this portion of Scripture, if you would, please. Ephes- excuse me, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. And, uh, and, and the word of the Lord. And, and we also, Paul says, we also especially thank God continually for this. Now pause right there. The apostle Paul is saying every time we think about this, it causes us to give thanks to God. Now that should, that should really put our spiritual antennas up. Now uh, this new age, that probably doesn't make a, a big difference to you or that illustration. Um, when I was a kid, we had rabbit ear antennas. I know nobody here knows what those are probably, but the, the, the rabbit ear antenna, you could plug it in TV, but if you want to get better perception, you had to extend them out. And the more you extended them out, the better reception you got. When Paul said this, it should cause us to really send, listen, what is it that caused him to continually to be thankful? That when you received the message of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it, not as the word of men, mere men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which is effectually at work in you that believe. Exercising its superhuman power in those who adhere to, trust in, and rely on it. The Apostle Paul said, this is what caused me to get so excited and to thank God every time I'm reminded about you. It's not your perfect attendance in church. It's not how big the church was. This is what got me excited, is that you received the word, not as from the apostle Paul, but you received it as it is in truth, the word of God into your life. Through this time, folks, I want us to refresh and restore on the inside of us a fresh reverence, respect, and even if I could say holy fear of the word of God in our life that we fall back in love with the Word, that we see it as, as valuable and, and important in our life, that it becomes not just a, a reference point, but it is an anchor in the way that we live our lives. Now, the Apostle Paul knew how important it was for them to, to receive the Word, not just a, a good sermon, not just because Paul said it, but they received it as it was, the Word of God in their life. Now, I want you, every time you go to your Bible, from now on, for at least a week or two, or at least while we're in this series, as you go to open up your Bible and read it, I would like you to pause, and before you read your Bible and your daily devotion, or, what, or, or how you do your devotions, is for you to pause and say, the Bible is God speaking to me. That simple declaration, that simple statement will start to change the way on the inside of you you receive the Word of God in your life. When you read the Bible, it won't be just, I got my chapter read today, but we'll read the Bible as God speaking to me today. The Bible is God speaking to us. Would you agree with that? If we agree with, to, uh, to that statement, how often should we spend time in the Bible? What should our attitude be towards the Bible? How, how committed are we to being doers of the word and not hearers only in our life? As we start to really reverence the word in our life, God says, I'll watch over my word to perform it in your life. He is at work in us to, to fulfill his word and his promises that he has given to us. As believers, as we're going forward, I want you to know that, that you're going to have some struggles. You're going to have some temptations. You're going to have some crisis that are going to hit your life. There's going to be times that you're going to have feelings that are going to come against you, emotions, depression, discouragement, demonic attacks that are just going to right out hit you. 
And we need to be prepared for those in our life. We need to be aware that those things will come to be able to try to take the word out of our life. But we're going to be doers of it. We're going to be standing on the word, believing the word, and declaring the word in our life. Jesus said this in John 16, He said, I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace. In the world you will have tribulation, distress, suffering, but be of good courage or be courageous, be confident, be filled with joy. I've overcome the world. My, my conquest is accomplished, my victory abiding. Jesus said, when we're in this world, you're going to face struggles, temptations, tests, and trials. But he says, I'm giving you a word. I'm giving you a word. And this word is, in me, you can have perfect peace in your life. As we go through this series and we start to meditate on the word in our life, I want you to know that, that there's going to be some struggles that are going to come, some, some opposition that is going to try to take that word out of your life. And you just need to stop and declare, I've got perfect peace in my life. I'm in Jesus and Jesus is in me. And the word says, Jesus said that in him I could have perfect peace in my life. As we start to see the application of this, that it's not just that we read the Bible and say, I agree that that's the word of God. But we read the word and say, that is God speaking to me in the way that I'm going to now be living my life. It's the way I'm going to be changed to be more like him. You see, I want this church, I want you as individuals to be overcomers, to be successful in life. It doesn't mean that everything is always going to go easy for you. But it means there is a, a word that will help you to be able to go through everything that you face in this life. You see, my concern is not if struggles happen in your life. My concern is when they happen, if you'll overcome those struggles in your life. My concern is not that we as a church, that we are liked by the world around us. My concern is that we get to be like Jesus, the living word, in the way that we're living and, and breathing and, and doing our lifestyle. And that's what the Apostle Paul was encouraging the believers of at his time. That was what he was encouraging them in this, this statement there, or this verse that we just read. This reason for him to rejoice was the way that they received the word, the way that they acted upon the word, they believed the word. The verse we just read, and let me read it real quickly again. 1 Thessalonians 2, 13, it says, and, and, and we also especially thank God continually for you, that when you received the message of God, because, uh, which you heard of us, you welcomed it, uh, not as the word merely from men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually at work in those that believe. As I was reading through that, there was three main kind of statements that popped out here that have two common factors about it. One, you are the one that receives the word that causes others to be thankful. It is the way you receive the word that caused, Paul said, uh, that because you received the word, it caused me to be thankful. It's the way that you uh, accept it in your life and, and, and draw it on the inside. He said, you welcomed the word, that you welcomed it, that, that you received it that you were the one with the reason for me to rejoice in this. Every one of them is you receiving the word. And I want you to know as your pastor that I am so excited when I see you receiving the word of God in your life. Where you take it in, that you believe it, that you hold, hold on to it and grasp it and realize that there is a world out there that is trying to steal that word from you, but you're going to have an effectual working of that word in your life. Another couple of words that mean effectual are we like dramatic, energetic, complete. Let me ask you real quickly. Would you say that the word of God is dramatic in your life? Would you say that the word of God is energetic in your life? I believe it's Hebrews uh, 4, 11, 12, right there, where it talks about the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and joint and marrow. One translation said the word of God is life-giving. It's, it's energizing. The life-giving word of God on the inside of you. It's not just that we say that we believe the Bible and we kind of have those thoughts. It's that we believe the Bible and that's in our heart and it's the way that we're going to live our life. 
regardless of what happens around us. And the exciting thing is that word starts to have an effectual work in us. It's a process of transformation. It's exciting to see how it changes us, influences us, makes an impact on us. The way that the word of God changes the way that we deal with situations and problems and even prosperity in our life according to the word of God. So over the next couple of weeks, we're going to look at this, the effectual working of the word in your life. How is it showing up on the inside of you? What is its effect on your life? What is its effect on your life? What transformational process is going on because of that word in you? And I would say this is one of the most important that we'll take the few moments this morning to look at. It's so exciting. It's so, so, so life-giving to us and, and, and so encouraging. And it's a, such a small verse, but it opens up such a huge world to us. And that's Romans 10, 17. Probably most of us in the room certainly have maybe heard of it or read it, or some of you can probably even quote it, Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing. Such, a, such a, a little thing there. So Such a little thing. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. What a, what a wonderful thing. Our first effectual work of the word in our life is it brings faith with it. It brings faith with us. When we stop and think about how important faith is in the Bible. You see, sometimes we, we've got it turned around where we want the thing, we want the blessing, we want the provision, we want the protection, we want the, the strength, we want the promise to come to pass, but the, the door that opens all of this up in our life is faith and the importance of faith in our life. You know, over the years, um, I've been accused of being a, a faith preacher at times, uh, but I want you to know that, that if you preach the word, faith comes by hearing the word. So if you're a, a faith preacher, you're probably preaching the word. And I, I, think, I think if you want to accuse me of preaching the word, that's okay. I'm guilty. I'm guilty of that along the way. But if we preach it, if we proclaim it, if we're sowing that seed into our hearts, I want to see the impact of it in our lives. So then faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. So this is where I pause right here and say, folks, I don't want you to listen to just Dennis preach a sermon today. I want you to listen to the word of God in your life. I want you to listen to what the Bible has to say to you. I want you to get this word to be able to stir on the inside. I want you to, to receive the word like the Thessalonians did and put it down on the inside of you. I want you to grab a hold of it and allow faith to stir on the inside of us. To just stop and think faith is so important in our life. You can't get saved without faith. Faith is so important in our life. We get saved by faith. You can't please God without faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. You've got to believe that he is, and he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. We know that, that the Bible tells us in 1 John 5, 4, that, that whosoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our, what? Faith. Faith is so important. Faith is what saves us. Faith is what pleases God in our life. Faith is what gives us overcoming victory in our life. The scripture says all things are possible to him that believes. Faith is important. But how in the world do we get this faith? So many times I've seen people, they struggle because they know they should have faith. They need faith. Where do I get faith? Where do I get this saving, God-pleasing, overcoming faith? It's called the B-I-B-L-E. It's the word of God. That when we receive it into our life, faith comes with the word. Faith comes with the word. Faith comes alive on the inside of us. The answer is anyone who needs faith can get faith by getting into the word of God. I think it's interesting that nowhere do we have, especially in the New Testament, do we have anyone that has ever prayed for somebody else to get faith. They got to get it themselves by digging into the Word. 
They can receive it by hearing a sermon, or they can get it by hearing someone else share some scripture. But basically, it comes from the word coming alive on the inside of them. This God-pleasing, saving, and overcoming faith is available to every single one of us as believers. And it's right there before us. It is right there in our lap that we can receive that faith and come alive with it. Folks, if you receive the word, uh, uh, you receive faith with it. Isn't that wonderful to know? It's kind of like water. Uh, when, you, when you receive water, you get wet with it. You can't take the wet out of water. You know, a couple years back when there was uh, a lot of uh, people were storing up different things and they were dehydrated this and dehydrated that. And if you got some stuff still dehydrated at your house, whatever. But, but they were, I, I was joking around saying, I'm going to start selling dehydrated water. All you got to do is add water to it and you'll be able to have dehydrated water. I was going to sell bottles of dehydrated water. I think I probably could have made some money on it, but, but I didn't write that. But, but folks, you can't get water without getting wet with it. And the word of God in our life, when you receive the word, you get faith with it in your life. And we need to see it as such that I'm receiving faith right now. I'm receiving the word. I'm receiving faith. Faith that's going to be pleasing to God. Faith that is going to overcome the obstacles of this world. And I'm going to put it to practice in my life. There are way too many Christians that are living in darkness, living in defeat, because they don't think they can get enough faith to get out. But all you got to do is get into the Word to get out of the problem that you're in right now in your life. I could go through a long list. I could give you all kinds of promises. I just want to keep it simple for us. Faith comes by hearing the Word of God in your life. So we look over that simple truth. It's almost something that we could step over and think insignificant. Yeah, but I don't feel it. Or yeah, but I don't see it. Or yeah, but how long do I have to? Instead of just pausing and saying, God, thank you for making a way, an open door, one door that opens up into all of the covenant and the promises that you have for us. The good news is, the great news is that every single one of us can receive faith when we get into the word of God. Every one of us can grow in our faith. And you grow to the extent and the speed that you want to as you get into the Word. Now, it's important to be a part of a church that preaches the Word. I'll agree, especially in our day. It's important to be a part of a group that, that believes the Word of God and its reality and its authority in our life. But you can be amongst a group of believers and still not be a believer. You can be amongst a group and they can have faith, but they don't necessarily, it just doesn't spill over on you you got to get into the Word of God yourself. you got to have that faith come alive on the inside of you yourself. Faith comes by hearing. And that is a, a, an initial experience, of course. But according to the structure there, it is an ongoing experience. It's not just having heard. It's not because I heard it once. I've already heard that. We need to keep hearing the Word of God. We need to keep it alive on the inside of us. We need to keep feeding ourselves and nourishing ourselves with the truth of God's word in our life and re receiving it as I just said, it is God's word for you. It's God speaking to me in my individual life. I know a lot of people say, well, you know, I, I really just don't have time in the word. I, I, I don't understand it. Um, I don't know how relevant it really is for me to, uh, in our day. Or, or individuals, well, I know people that have abused and misused the word, so I just stay away from it. I just want to challenge you, as, and I'm going to just get back into the Bible. Get back into reading the Bible. If nothing else, start with John's gospel. Read through John's gospel. When you get through with John's gospel, read, read Romans. Go through the book of Romans. Read through the book of Romans. And, and just start to allow it to, to, to marinate in your life and challenge you. But, but I just want to challenge you folks that if God took the time to state it, we should take the time to meditate on it. Have you ever had someone tell you something and you didn't catch it the first time? I'll turn it around. Have you ever told somebody something and they didn't catch it the first time? So what do you need to do? You need to remind them. You need to tell them again. They need to hear it again and hear it again, and hear it again. And that's what we need to do with the Word of God. It's not just that I've read the Bible once, 
but that I'm feeding on the Word of God, that I keep myself uh, hearing it constantly, going over and over in my life. If God stated the Word to us, folks, then we should take the time to meditate on it. If God gave us the Word, then the Holy Spirit wants to teach us the Word. You're not going to figure it all out just reading through it one time. It's going to be, it's for the rest of your life and possibly beyond that we're going to constantly learn more and more about the Word and how it applies to our life. So the Holy Spirit wants to teach the Word to us. And Jesus himself said that, that this Word will not pass away. So if the Word's not going to pass away, it is relevant in our day. It is truth for our day. And it should be the way that we receive it in our life. And yes, there are some that have abused the word. Even during Jesus' time, there were those that were abusing the, 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 the Old Testament Septuagint and, and scriptures that were there. But just because someone abuses something doesn't mean we shouldn't proclaim the truth and to be able to help people get back on track of what God wants to do in our lives. So I want to encourage us to, to stir again a fresh desire for the word of God. I'm not going to just read the Bible so I can learn what new promise I can get out of God. If anything, I'm going to be reading my Bible saying, God, how do I need to be changed to be more like Jesus as I'm reading your word? What things need to be changed on the inside of me? What thoughts need to be replaced with the truth of your word? What actions need to be changing? What things have I allowed to be permissible in my life? that I need to declare that they no longer have authority in my life. I need to spend time in the Word allowing it to transform and to change me and to be able to speak that Word out of my life. So I'm asking you, spend more time in the Word. I'm asking you, if faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word, one of the best places you can hear the Word is out of your own mouth. Can I get an amen out of anybody? I got some heads, but I'm not knowing if you're falling asleep and just caught yourself or if you're agreeing with me. I think it's interesting that when Philip ran up to the chariot where the Ethiopian was, that he heard the Ethiopian reading the word aloud by himself, but he was speaking it aloud. It's common practice. I think it's interesting the King Josiah in the Old Testament, when they had found the scroll and, and in the temple and they brought it out and they read the scroll, that it not only affected King Josiah, but it caused a revival in the whole nation. As the prophet, or excuse me, the priest brought out the, the scroll and started to read it, uh, uh, one individual historian uh, thought that they probably read the whole scroll through and the king sat there and listened to the whole thing. It was read aloud, and by reading it aloud, it transformed and changed the king's heart supernaturally. And because of that, affected the whole nation. I wonder what would happen if your house, if you started just reading the word aloud. I wonder what would happen if you started to hear you speaking the word of God in your life. I wonder what would happen if your family and your kids, maybe even, even your dog, started hearing you speaking the word in your life. It's an interesting a uh, little story that goes along with the Welsh revival uh, years ago. That at that time they had the, the little ponies that would work the mines, and the miners would take the ponies and they would go down into the mines, and then the ponies would, would pull the, the carts of ore back out. And the miners, of course, used some language that maybe most of us in this room don't use. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yes. And there was a move of God such that the miners got saved. They're, they had such an experience with the word of God in their life that they immediately changed their vocabulary. And it confused the ponies because they didn't know what that, that they were being told because of the new sanctified language that the miners were using on the ponies. So I want to encourage us as believers... Read the word, that's important, but speak the word. Hear yourself saying the word of God. Hear yourself reading the word of God. Go ahead and, and take the Bible, open it up. I, I don't mean this bad in any shape or form, 
I don't want you just pulling out one of your promise cards for the day. I want you to find out some of those obligations the word of God has for us to say. I want us to go ahead and read through some of the word that, that gets a little bit deeper than just a verse of, of a promise along the way. I want a verse that what God is challenging you to be like because of the word. Remember, our goal is not to get the world to like us. Our goal is to be like Christ in our life. Now, I've shared this with you before, and I'm going to do it again today because it just is, is, is a practical application to be able to achieve a spiritual goal in our life. And some of you, maybe you're new or whatever, maybe you haven't done it for a while, but I want to, I'm going to ask you to do this. And it's simply SOAP, S-O-A-P, SOAP. I, I have words, I keep them short, and it helps me out along the way. SOAP, SOAP. As we go through this process of getting that word alive in our life, SOAP, first of all, S is for Scripture. We're reading it, we're writing it out, and we're saying it. This is something I've even started doing some at my desk at home, is sitting down, I read a chapter, and I write the whole chapter out. Well, Pastor, why, you, why, you, why, why would you do that? It's amazing. Is how, one, it takes time, it takes some discipline, and some thought along the way. Maybe you're not writing a whole scripture out, but would you at least, as you're reading through your Bible on a regular basis, at least find a scripture and write it down. Put it down in writing. Rewrite it. it. It does stuff to you. It's a discipline in your life. It's very easy for you to read. Have you ever read a chapter and then forgot even what chapter that was that you read? And so you need to pause. As I'm reading through this, I'm looking, I'm listening for, a vo- for at least one verse that the Holy Spirit would stir on my heart. And I'm going to write that verse down. And I'm going to be thinking about that today. I'm not even going to be thinking about it. I'm going to get a chance. I'm going to say that verse. I'm going to verbally say that verse. Now, it's good to memorize the scripture, but for the purposes for the Holy Spirit to transform us from the inside out, that we allow that word to come out of us. So I'm going to, first of all, scripture. I'm going to read it. I'm going to write it. And I'm going to say, um, I would even challenge you over the next couple of weeks to put, if you have a devotional book that you're reading through, is maybe pause that and just overdose on the Bible. Just read the word. Just read the word. Nothing wrong with devotionals. Oftentimes they give us one or two verses and then they give us a whole long explanation of what that person got out of it. Nothing wrong with it, but let's reverse that. Let's go ahead and read that much scripture and write down a verse that you got something out of it and allow the Holy Spirit to start to speak to you in your life individually. This is, uh, is what we call discipleship. It is a discipline that we're bringing into our lives so that we can be more like Christ to be able to do what he's called us to do. So we're going to go ahead and put that uh, in writing, and then I can say it. You don't need to turn there, but let me just quickly read a verse to you out of Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 9. This is where the children of Israel were going and ready to go into the promised land. And God gives them the responsibility of especially for parents to teach your children the word of the Lord. Parents, be responsible for teaching the word of the Lord to your children. Here in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 through 9, it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the Lord, is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and with all of your strength. Can you agree with that so far in the Old Testament here? He goes on then and says, in verse 6, And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. The word should get in you. How do we get the word in us? We get the word in us. These words shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently. Does everyone say diligently? You should teach them diligently to your children. And so, uh, to your children, and shall uh, talk of them, shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk in the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. Verse, that's verse 7. He's saying, this is what the conversation that needs to be going on in your house. It needs to be predominantly based on the word. 
There needs to be influence. You're looking for teaching opportunities. Yet you're re- re- revealing these to your children, that you're diligently teaching your children. You're talking to them when, when you are uh, talking with them, when you sit down in the house, when you're walking with them, taking them to school, what you're doing there, when you're lying down at nighttime, when you get up in the morning, that we're letting the word influence our life. Verse 8 says, and you shall bind them um, as a sign on your hand, and they shall be uh, a, a frontlets between your eyes, and they shall uh, write them on the doorposts of your house and your gateposts. He's saying this is how you need to get the word. It basically, saying everywhere you go, with everything you do, especially within your dominion of your kids, your family, your home, that there needs to be there where you're seeing the word or you're talking the word, they're hearing the word. There needs to be a constant influence of the importance of the word of God in our homes. It's so important and so significant. He's saying, you've got to do this. The unfortunate thing is that over in the New Testament, in, an, in Matthew's gospel, Jesus goes and he actually reprimands the Pharisees of the day because they had legalistically fulfilled this. They would actually have little scrolls that they would put the, like the Ten Commandments on and they would make little boxes with them and put them in and either hang them on, um, from their forehead or else would hang them on their garments or, or bind them on their arms so that people could see them have these words. But they weren't putting the word in the heart. Folks, it's wonderful to have scripture references on uh, art pieces on your wall. And that's good, reminding of you the word. But really where we need to get them is in the heart. And as we're looking at this series, folks, I'm not asking you just to memorize scripture in your head. I'm not asking you just to repeat things like a parrot. Our goal is get the word in us. Turn to your neighbor and say, you need the word in you. You need, you need the word. You need the word in you, brother. You need to get the word in you. Why do I need the word? Because the word is what pleases God, saves my life, and overcomes this world that is around me. So we need the soap. We need the word, the scripture coming alive on the inside of us. The O is observation. As you read the Bible, allow the Holy Spirit to bring it alive to you. Make an observation that you can take from that portion of Scripture. Look at it. Listen. Uh, How does that affect today? The Holy Spirit is the great teacher. He wants you to understand that word. It's not just information that you're getting. It's divine revelation that he wants to bring alive inside of your life and transform you. I remember the first time the verse really came alive in me that you are the righteousness of God in Christ. Man, that transformed the way I I started to think and to live. I remember the first time the verse came alive to me, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in in me. Man, I, I knew it in my head. I could quote it with my mouth, but then it came alive and it started to be an observation now that I could say, this is gonna change my life. What's an observation you can make of that scripture? Probably good for you to write that down too. And then here's a fun one for you. What's an application? How can you, if you're reading the word, we're supposed to be doers of the word and not hearers only. What's an application? How can I apply that? How can I put that to practice in my life? How can I do it right here, right where I am? How can I do it in my culture? You see, truth never changes. Jesus said in John 17, 17, sanctify them, set them apart for God's use. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. The word of God is always truth. And culture changes. Life changes. Situations change around us. But God's word never changes. Isaiah actually warns us in Isaiah chapter 5, verses 20 and 21. He says, woe, judgment is coming. Woe, judgment is coming for those that call good evil and evil good. Those who called light darkness and darkness light. Those that try to change the truth is the ones that are going to experience the judgment of God, especially where it comes to the word. And in our day and age, folks, I want you to know that we love all people. We love everyone exactly the same. But truth does not change. And we must understand in this day how to raise up our children and to be an example of the truth of God. And we've got to know the truth before we can proclaim the truth. We've got to know the truth so that we can help set other people free with the truth along the way. So what is an application? 
when I read the Bible? How can I put it to practice in my life? And the last one here, the final part of that is of the S-O-A-P. The P part of that is proclamation. I mean, my verse even for today is, is, is Psalm 118, verse 17. I will not die, but live and declare the works and recount the illustrations of God's amazing acts of love. I will live and not die and proclaim the works of God. What is your proclamation? When you get done reading the Bible, you ought to make a proclamation of that. We've been encouraging you even in the morning before you get out of bed, get to make a proclamation about your God and what he wants to do. If we have faith on the inside of us, faith always wants to come out. Faith wants to come out in our actions. Faith wants to come out in our declarations. What are we declaring over our life? What are we decreeing over the situations? We can all, you know, I, I, sometimes I've been accused of being Captain Obvious. Hey, this is what the situation is and this is how bad it is. But I want you to know that there's a spirit of faith that needs to come up on the inside of us. And that spirit of faith says this is what God said and what he wants to do in this situation. When we lay hands on the sick, then we believe there is a healing power that is available. We cast out devils, not because that we're spiritually good, but because God is great and he wants to work in our lives. There's amazing things that God wants to do through us, his church. But here's the thing, folks. Are we people of faith? Are we people that have active faith in our life? Faith that believes the word in our life. If we have people that are believing the word, then are we living like we believe it's truth? It is the standard. It's what we will never allow to be changed in our lives, but to always follow after him. Amen? SOAP, S-O-A-P. Scripture, observation, application, proclamation. That's what we're going to be doing in our life. If you're not going to change, uh, if, you, if you're not going to do something to change, then you can't expect change in your life. But if you'll start to be a doer, you'll start to be able to see what God can do through you. Amen? Stand with me if you would, please. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for being the good God that you are. We thank you for your holy presence in our life. And the first step of faith that we have in our life is to accept Jesus as our Savior. And so right now, we just thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit is here to draw us ever closer to you, to make that word alive in us so that we can be proclaimers of it in our life. So when we accept Jesus as our Savior, I thank you it is a confident step of faith. We can know that we have saving faith. But then, Lord, our prayer today, more than anything else, that is that saving faith in us would start to be demonstrated in the way that we live like people who have been saved by your grace. Help us as we go to your word and help it to come alive on the inside of us. Help us to see what you have created us now to be that we're new creatures in Christ Jesus. Help us have this faith that stirs on the inside of us because we've received your word. It ignites us, it empowers us, it encourages us, it transforms us. Thank you, Father God, for making it available for every single one of us by simply stepping through the door of faith. And so, Lord, we just pray that your spirit move through us, the power of God work in us. And as we leave this place today, we leave with a fresh awareness that faith comes by hearing, and we're going to keep listening to what God has to say. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want you to encourage you this week, be a doer of that word and you'll see God work supernaturally in your life. God bless you. We love you, and we'll see you a week from today.